Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I am here today to share with you Carson's birth story. She was due on July 11th and we had a plan all along. I, like many of you know, I deal with midwives in my pregnancy. So Saturday, July 18th at like 11.45, I was getting contractions. Nothing serious, but I can tell these are contractions. So early labor probably. The plan has always been to labor at home as long as possible and then go to the hospital and then naturally be able to deliver there. Sunday the 19th and all throughout the day on Sunday I was having moderate contractions. So they were picking up a little bit, a little bit more regular, but I could walk through them, talk through them, cook through them, like be just my normal self. By like six-ish they were getting uh, enough to where I was like okay let me call the midwife and see what's going on the rule is 511 so you go in when your contractions are five minutes apart last one minute long and consistently for an hour then you know okay this is like going into active labor it's time to get to the hospital so I call her we talk about everything she's you know reassuring me this is early labor all of that so I'm like okay great before long they started to get stronger and I was tracking them at this point and timing them and they were getting closer together so I went to the bathroom one time and saw and I had a little bit of bleeding which is a good inclination you know that you're going into labor too so I called the midwife back and just be like hey just so you know this happened and she's like okay this is looking really good you're going your body's going into labor how are you feeling like let me know if they get to the point where you have to really concentrate and focus through them I was like okay I hang up we just kind of monitor it and it's getting a little bit later and they were coming very quickly at this point but not lasting that long so they were coming like three minutes apart and lasting 30 seconds they were coming so quickly vance is like you need to call and like tell her that we're gonna come in and my mom is like yeah i'm not feeling comfortable with this they're coming too close together like so i'm like are you guys sure just trying to stay at home as long as possible so we call her and I tell her what's what's going on and she's like, okay, yeah, it's a good time to go. So we head to the hospital. By the time we get to the hospital, it's about like 1230. My brother TJ met us there, picked up Vance Jr. who went with him to stay with him. Um, and she she measures my cervix, which was two centimeters dilate. Once you get to 10, you're ready to push. And they connect me to the monitors which monitor baby's heart rate also monitor my contractions so she's like okay she you're at two i'll come back in an hour and we'll talk about what we do from there so all of a sudden we had been in there for probably an hour and all of a sudden it's like four people came rushing in the room they rush in the one lady is like can you turn over on your side so i'm slowly trying to turn over on my side and i'm not moving fast enough for her and so she's like, hey, you got to hurry. And I'm like, I'm trying. And she's like, your baby's heart rate dropped. I need you to hurry. So I like force myself over. The doctor like crazy pulls my leg up to measure me real quick. And I could just tell by the way they were doing things that they were concerned about something. You know, they were pretty calm, but I could just tell that something concerned them. Someone comes in with an IV for fluids and electrolytes. Um, no meds, just fluids. So then she the doctor looks up and she's like she's at two centimeters and she's like miss Kirkwood, we're gonna keep you so i was like all right and then they're like taking us to our room so we get to the room the doctor at the time before the midwife comes comes in and she's like i know things are not going like you planned we've read through your birth plan we know your expectations and all of that but unfortunately sometimes the babies change things and xyz and i was just looking at her like cut to the chase sis like what's up well, basically her heart rate had dropped super low it's not supposed to go below 110 I think it was and hers dropped down to like 80 and she said it was like that for five minutes and she said when I first got there when they first put the monitor on me it was doing some sharp dips down as well which is concerning too so she was like We've talked to Tanya, who's my midwife. We're getting all of our directions from Tanya. Like we're not doing anything. She is the head and we're all doing everything that she says. So the plan is to 
put your put like a balloon up in my cervix expand it and pull it down which would make my cervix start uh dilating quicker because they at that point they wanted my labor to progress quickly because her heart rate was was dropping down during some of the contractions to a, an alarming rate um so then they would give me pitocin which would jumpstart the contractions to make them come quicker so she's like i can wait like an hour and then check you again if you have dilated to at least four or five we won't need to to go that route we can just go straight to the pitocin so she's like let me call tanya make sure that's okay and so forth so i'm like okay cool that sounds good check me in an hour so the doctor leaves out and i look to my mom and vance like what do you guys think they were just positive about the situation I'm like yeah you probably will just dilate on your own it probably will you know when she checks you again we just believe god that you'll be at four or five and i'm like okay yeah so their responses of course gave me hope gave me you know, the encouragement that I needed. But at that point, I was not willing to let go of all the things that I had been praying for, all the things that I had been believing for, all the things that I had been expecting. And of course, taking seriously what the doctor said. And of course, we would want to have whatever we needed to do to get the baby here safely. Of course, that's the number one priority. But I believed that she could get here safely by me going into natural labor all by myself. So we all agreed and just prayed and believed that I would continue to progress on my own and wouldn't even need the balloon or the Pitocin, which is meds for induction. So while we're waiting, they kind of go to sleep. They There's a bed and a chair. So they go to sleep and I am um, manhandling these contractions. They were not manhandling me. And I had, um, I was sitting bouncing on the ball and yeah. watching the monitor. Every time I'd have a contraction, I'd look and make sure that her heart rate wasn't going down. And if I saw that it was going down, I would tell it to go back up and I would call her by name and say, Carson, get your heart rate up. Carson, tolerate these contractions. Cause the reason that her heart rate was dropping down with someone was because they were saying that she was not tolerating the contractions well, for whatever reason, maybe she was on the court or something like that, but she was not tolerating them well. So one of the things that I consistently said was healthy climbs and healthy dips for her heart rate. Whenever I'd have a contraction, I'd be saying healthy climbs, healthy dips. And I would talk to my body and I would told her that we're going to work together to get her here safely. Part of what I was believing for this whole entire time, this whole pregnancy, and even for my first one was pain-free labor, pain-free delivery. I truly believe it is possible. It is a thing that you can have a pain-free labor and a pain-free delivery. Um, and when I would feel the contractions get super tight, I would talk to them and I would say... I don't have pain, pain doesn't have me. I don't have pain, pain doesn't have me. I was able to endure them. So she came back and she checked me and she's like, yes, oh my gosh, you're four, we're at four. So I was like, yay, like so excited. Thank you, Jesus. Like celebrating and super happy because my body was doing what it needed to do so that I would not have to have um, any, you know, medications for induction. So I'm like, okay, so since I am progressing, can we hold off on the Pitocin too to see if I can continue to comp to continue to progress at a quick enough rate and she's like sure let me call tanya that was fine I, tanya said that was cool and we were able to hold off to see if i was going to continue to progress so everything was going fine i continued out throughout the night um the, whatever the next time she checked was the times were running together at this point the whole night ran together <laughs> to be honest um, she came back in, checked me one more time. I was at five and she's like, we don't need the Pitocin, we're good. So right now, awesome news. I don't need any induction. I don't need a C-section. Everything is looking awesome. Everything is looking great. Mind you, she did tell me when I was in triage and she had that large heart dip that I was on my way to emergency C-section and would need to be put under anesthesia if her heart rate didn't come up when it did. When they finally got me to flip on my side, that's when her heart rate went back up to where it should be in the healthy range. So thank you, Jesus, that that was able, <laughs> that we were able to get over that hurdle, um, hurdle. At the time, I knew something was concerning to them, but I didn't know that it was that serious. All the things I had been expecting and speaking about for months and months and months and months. Now is time for it to happen. So I just was continuing to believe that I would can uh progress and everything would be fine in the morning i just remember feeling like the man like i this i got this like this is great like i'm able to i'm doing i'm breathing and 
I'm in certain positions that are helping and Vance is putting pressure on my lower back with the tennis balls. You know, mom's giving me massages. They're praying, we're confessing. We're all on the same page. We had our worship music playing, our essential oils um, on the sheets and everything was just going really well, really smoothly. And then when it was time to deliver, Nobody knew it was time to deliver because the last time I was checked was when they told me I was five centimeters. So at the point where I felt like, okay, I've been managing this well, everything's been going according to plan. I have not been struggling with pain. I was feeling them, they were intense, but I was not struggling through them. When I got to the point where I felt like, okay, now this is getting different. This is feeling different now. This is becoming harder to manage you know what's going on here and now the contractions were doubling and i was getting no relief no rest no break so on the monitor you can see the contractions climb up and that's when they get the tightest at the top and then they come back down and then they would go right back up so i was not getting a break so i started to almost get like panicked because i'm like whoa whoa this is not what i asked for this is not what it's supposed to be like I was being cool up to this point, but what is this? And I remember feeling like, I don't know if I could possibly do this. As far as I knew, I was still at five. Nobody checked me, nobody said anything. So I'm like, I, like Jesus, the contractions were doubling. So it was becoming very difficult to manage them. They were even, some of them were even tripling. So it was, it was just getting really tough. So they told me, get on all fours. And I would have a bean bag uh, under my stomach and then like pillows where I could put my arms. And I was like, oh, this is so comfortable. Before I moved to that position, I remember telling them that I had pressure in my butt. And I know that pressure in your butt is like, you know, time. But nobody said anything. The nurses, like I said, were in and out. Uh, it was just us three. And they were just kind of, nobody was really saying anything. No one was really flinching about that. So I was like, okay, maybe it's just me. I need to just relax and get through it. So I go to the other position and... I'm just like feeling a little bit discouraged at this point because I'm like, I have this all under control. I was not struggling with pain and now I feel like I'm, I, I don't know if I can do this. And then I started feeling pressure in my lady parts. And that's when my mom was like, okay, somebody please come and check her because she's feeling pressure down there. So finally they come in to check me. She's like, this is why you're feeling like this. It's time to push. So I'm like, oh my God, I was like, thank I was like, I can live with that. I remember saying I can live with that because I was so discouraged thinking like that I wasn't able to have the labor that I wanted, but I was able to have the labor that I wanted. And the period of time where I felt like it was getting unbearable and I felt like pain was creeping up on me, it was because it was time for me to push. So Vance has one leg, my mom has the other. And they're, you know, I'm pushing through the contractions, which is finally relief because you, you're pushing through the contraction. And those are the contractions that are the ones that were almost unbearable. They weren't supposed to be endured. They were supposed to be pushed through. So I'm pushing through and everyone's like, oh, you're doing great. I'm like, wow, it's not going to take you four hours this time. I pushed with Vance Jr. for four hours before he came. But I literally probably pushed probably four maybe no more than six times and I pushed her 15 minutes and she was born and I rem remember feeling her head when it was out and I didn't want to release the push because I was so afraid she was gonna like suck back up <laughs> suck back up and it didn't hurt I didn't have an epidural didn't have any medicine it didn't hurt but I did feel like the stretching which I had told my body stretch and expand the proper way so I felt it and then I like let go got a breath and I pushed some more and I could just feel her body, her little body come out. So her body came right out. She came to me, Vance cut the cord, all that good stuff. And it was just a very surreal experience to be able to push her out so easily in only 15 minutes. And I did not feel pain at all. I just felt like my part expanding and, and they're like open your eyes look I'm like I am not opening my eyes I'm focusing right now I have I have it all under control behind these closed eyes so I just it was just really amazing just very thankful thank God all, every time I think about it and that is Parsons birth story
She was totally healthy, no complications at all. They thought, they did have to break my water in there. I left that part out. An answer to our prayers as a baby and an answer to our prayers at, in the whole labor, the whole birthing experience. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.